Hey folks, I'm Ray Latif, the editor and producer of Taste Radio. I'm with John Craven, the CEO of BevNet, and you're watching the Elevator Talk live stream. We're broadcasting from Watertown, Massachusetts, here at BevNet headquarters. Thank you all for watching. Over the next two hours, we'll be speaking with about 30 entrepreneurs from across the country, representing food and beverage brands that would have been exhibiting or walking the show floor at Expo West 2020. And here's an opportunity for us to hear from them. John Craven, how are you? Great, I'm glad to be back for round two. Indeed, indeed. We had an amazing uh, run of guests on Tuesday, a couple days ago, uh, talking to entrepreneurs about some of their innovation and news, rebrands, repackaging, etc. Uh, again, that they would have showcased at Expo West 2020. Once again, if you could sort of recap uh, the idea behind this Elevator Talk live stream for our audience, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Well, you hit, uh, hit a bunch of it right there, <laughs> but you know what we're trying to do here is really create you know a platform that these brands and entrepreneurs can you know express what their company is what their new stuff is in their own words hopefully get some face time that we all missed out on uh, I guess that would have been last week yeah. and you know I think back for round two we've changed a few things and you know we're just trying to keep tweaking our format too so <laughs> I guess round two we'll see how it goes Indeed. Uh, again, we've got 30 folks from across the food and beverage industry. You know, it's been a challenging week for Americans, uh, for folks across the world. Um, and I'm hoping over the next couple hours we'll bring some positivity, uh, much needed positivity, by talking to folks that are trying to move this industry forward. Um, and as we've seen, you know, the food and beverage industry, just a bastion for uh, great information, great innovation, um, and great uh, excitement when it comes to the future of what we're eating and what we're seeing on shelf. Yeah, hopefully. I think, uh, you know, that's always the most exciting part about Expo West is, you know, getting to see that, you know, cutting edge, bleeding edge stuff. And I definitely miss that. So I think it's, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. A bunch of the brands have sent samples in. And, you know, again, I mean, I think to your point, it's just sort of nice to, you know, be focusing on the positive here, which yeah. is, you know, the innovation in this space. And, the energy and hustle of a lot of these entrepreneurs too. We definitely saw a lot of hustle uh, on Tuesday. It was fun to talk to entrepreneurs. We saw entrepreneurs who were stacking shelves at Erewhon. We saw ones that were in their cars on, uh, on store visits. We saw folks that were in their home preparing for that next uh, pitch, that next sales pitch. And, and then we saw folks who just had some pretty incredible backdrops. They created a really, <laughs> it created some the really virtual great, booth. these really great virtual booths in their homes or their offices. I'm sure we're going to see more of that today as well. And uh, yeah, I think it's about time to get started. All Once right. again, you're watching the Elevator Talk live stream. I'm Ray Latif. This is John Craven. And we are going to get started with our first guest of the session. And that is David Ross. He's the CEO of Live Soda. Live Soda, brand you and I know well. Yeah, from good old Austin, Texas. Good old Austin, Texas indeed. David, how are you? Welcome to the uh, live stream. Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. Exciting to uh, see you. Uh, tell us a bit about what Live Soda would have been exhibiting at Expo West. Um, you know, Live Soda, uh, we're an Austin-based company. Um, right now we have three product lines. Uh, we have our kombucha line, a drinking vinegar line, and a probiotic soda. Uh, I was going to focus today and the focus of our uh, Expo West boot was going to be on our probiotic soda. Um, it's a product that we've had out for the last two years, two years ago this month. Uh, but we're excited to announce that we have reformulated. Um, and so we have a great new taste. Uh, as always, it's zero sugar, zero calories. We had previously sweetened with uh, a blend of erythritol and monk fruit uh, as part of this reformulation. Uh, we were able to remove the erythritol, and now we sweeten with a couple of different kind of monk fruits, uh, which help our carbs go from five uh, carbs per serving to one carb per serving, um, and also took the sugar apples out of our product. Um, so it's a great new taste, an even cleaner label. Um, you know, it's a non-GMO product, uh, and we were excited to get it out and get it across people's lips, uh, but uh, didn't have the opportunity. Uh, and thank you guys for helping us uh, have the opportunity to do that. For sure. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting because so much of your company has to do with creating a better tasting 
kombucha or better tasting, healthier uh, soda. Are consumers at this point, you know, given that there's been a lot of education and awareness about probiotic, probiotics, are they understanding that you can have flavor and function in the same beverage? Yeah, they really are. And, you know, we have benefited from the last 20 plus years of probiotics. Uh, we, we certainly are uh, appreciative of all the people who kind of forged this path for us. But, you know, consumers, uh, probiotics are somewhat ubiquitous and there's a lot of uh, awareness about probiotics. And so we were able to kind of ride that wave, um, but introduce it into a new format. Um, you know, we were the first uh, soda, actual soda with probiotics. And, uh, and yes, and we do have a lot of customers who, uh, with that awareness, see our product, give it a shot and start noticing, uh, start noticing some, some good things in their gut. Um, you know, what we're trying to do, our overall mission is to get people uh, to reduce their carbonated soft drink, uh, sugary carbonated soft drink consumption and giving them a few different places to be able to land with similar flavor profiles. Uh, you know, we've been able to have great success with it. Excellent. Outstanding. Uh, David, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on the Elevator Talk live stream. Good luck with everything going forward and I uh, hope to see you in Austin really soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks for having this today, guys. Outstanding. Thank you. See ya. Good stuff. Have a good day. I'd love to um, love to try the reformulated uh, probiotic sodas. Exciting stuff. Yeah, they as you mentioned, they've been around a long time. Yeah. So uh, always neat to see brands that are just continuing to try and make the product better and better. Totally, totally. Uh, up next, hello. <laughs> hello. We have Rita Katona, uh, who is the co-founder of So Good So You. And who else do we have with us? Hi, I'm Jenna Sullivan, director of sales. Hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, obviously, you can see by the backdrop, so good, so you, you guys make uh, juices and juice shots. Uh, tell us about uh, a bit about the uh, innovation you're going to be showcasing at Expo West. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, first of all. So we are a mission-driven, plant-based functional beverage company, and we truly believe that every decision that we as a company and as individuals make matters and makes a difference, and thus our tagline, for the love of body and planet, drives every single decision that we make and everything we do. And while to date what's taken us nationwide as a company is our probiotic wellness shots, we did have innovation within that product line. Um, every one of our shots has a billion units of uh, probiotics, which is great for gut and immune health. Um, and we pride ourselves in the fact that we're always bringing innovation. Last year it was beauty and energy. This year it's sleep, um, as well as some other exciting things we're getting ready to talk about. Sleep sounds like a great function. Uh, how do you uh, communicate sleep as a function to consumers? Are they understanding what the ingredients are? Are they asking what the, what the ingredients are? I mean, what's your sort of marketing strategy when it comes to this new SKU? Yeah, I think first and foremost, it's just being really deliberate with our naming conventions, which is sleep. Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory of what it's gonna help you do. But right now we're really fortunate that consumers wanna know what's in their products and we're happy to be communicating that with them incredibly transparently on the package, as well as on our little display cartons, plus website, plus Instagram um, feeds. And this, uh, this skew as well as all the innovation that we launch is very much community driven, consumer driven and data driven. And so sleep was a function that our community told us we were not addressing and that there wasn't a product that was all natural that they felt excited to take and use on a regular basis from a safety and efficacy perspective. And so um, the data that we got back was just really astounding in terms of the percentage of Americans and the percentage of people that are actually like our community and our people that suffer from uh, either difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. And so um, it's been a really wonderful and overwhelming response. And of course, as all of our products, the sleep shot is delicious. So we really need to um, taste the difference with, uh, with our products uh, as compared to competitors. The functional active in this is uh, California poppy extract and lavender, and the awesome blue color is uh, butterfly pea flower powder and a delicious honey blue flavor. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sending samples. I'm going to have to try one of those tonight because uh, <laughs> I've been pretty restless the last couple of nights, so Are I think the sleep shot will be good for this. Shots? I'm sorry? Are you taking your immunity shots? Oh, you bet I am. <laughs> you got to yes. take immunity shots yeah. these days. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the live stream. Uh, good luck with everything going forward and uh, look forward to catching you at the next trade show.
Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks so much. All right. That's the second blue shot I think we've seen uh, on here. So may maybe a trend. <laughs> Indeed, it is a trend. Blue, you know, blue is a nice color. It's, it att it's attractive on shelf, right? Yeah, it's a challenging one, but I think it stands out. It's real blue, though. It's not like real the blue, blue no, healthy raspberry blue, stuff healthy that you blue, see out for there. Sure. Okay, up next is Ryan Armistead, who's the CEO of Happy Moose. Ryan, how are you? Good, guys. Thank you. How are you guys doing today? We're Good. doing great. Doing great. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar, what's Happy Moose? Happy Moose is uh, cold-pressed juices, wellness shots, and functional plant-based tonics. Very cool. Uh, what were some of the innovation? What were some of the news that you were going to share at Expo West? Oh, some of the innovation that we were excited to share. Um, number one was an extension to our functional wellness shot category. We've uh, developed some really awesome and what we believe to be uh, extremely innovative uh, extension of this line. We've got some uh, new recipes here, three new SKUs. Um, one is a uh, you can see these well. This is a uh, collagen infused um, grapefruit citrus shot, five grams of collagen protein per serving. Over here, we've got this really awesome spicy wheatgrass. This is my personal favorite, very delicious. Some jalapeno pepper along with wheatgrass, ginseng, uh, and lime. And then we also have this pre and probiotic shot that has uh, elderberry, pomegranate, a little bit of uh, lime, and mm -hmm. Uh, citrus as well. So yeah, we're really excited to launch these guys and unfortunately couldn't do that at an expo. <laughs> and what uh, retailers can one find those at? And I guess to pile a second question on, what's the uh, retail price? Yeah, targeted uh, MSRP is going to be $399. And uh, we're getting ready to launch these in nugget markets here in uh, California, but we're selling them at um, Lots of, I'd say, specialty natural independent grocery channel, okay. um, as well as uh, Molly Stones. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of the um, smaller chains right now, but we're um, excited to pre present to some larger retail partners coming up in the coming weeks. Nice. And that's some uh, updated branding that I'm seeing too, right, with the, uh, with the, the new products as well? Actually, this is our current br branding, and we're, um, we're actually kind of saving our uh, new brand refresh and packaging design um, I'd say we're just a couple weeks away from that announcement, but we're going to be doing like a launch party here locally with um, some of our partners. And so we're saving it for that, but we're definitely going to be excited to uh, uh, get you guys in on the loop and uh, share that with you as soon as we have that uh, Excellent. available. Okay. Exciting stuff for <laughs> sure. Uh, and what's the size of those products as well? These are two ounces. Uh, most of our uh, fresh juices are 12 ounces. Um, and then our plant-based tonics are 10 ounces. Very cool. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us on the live stream. Really appreciate the time. Uh, excited to see what the uh, new look looks like. Uh, whenever you're ready to reveal it, let us know. Absolutely, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. And if anybody's interested, get in touch. Happy Moose, the best stuff coming out of California. There you go. All right. Nice take job, care. Ryan. Thanks so much. Y'all take care. Take it easy. Uh, I, I do remember drinking some Happy Moose at, uh, it was a BevNet Live winter, I, I want to say 2018, I mm -hmm. think Ryan was at the event. Uh, good stuff, great yeah. stuff actually. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of those shot companies, like the quality from all of them is just so impressive nowadays. Totally. All right, next up is Ashley Jelinek, who's the founder and CEO of Kids Love. Ashley? Hi. Hi. Good to How see are you guys? Us. We're great. To see. It's we're great. It, even better now that we're seeing a former New Beverage Showdown <laughs> uh, contestant <laughs> with us on the live stream. Yep, yeah. I'm here. Uh, Kids Love, relatively new. Tell us a little bit about the company. So Kids Love is the first zero sugar vitamin enhanced beverage for kids. Um, we are non-GMO, vegan, kosher, and gluten-free. We come in a resealable, <laughs> recyclable, twist cap, tetra pack, no straws here. Um, and we are launching a new flavor this year, orange peach. And currently we have our coconut, starstruck coconut and flying flamingo. Very nice. Now where are the products sold? I, I seem to remember seeing it at Erewhon uh, a couple months back. Yeah, so we um, have gained a lot of legs this year in 2020. So we are in natural independence up northern and southern California, included Air One. And this year we'll be launching with um, CVS and Walmart. Very cool. Um, what's CVS and Walmart's interest in kids' beverages? Do you see it increasing? Do you see these kinds of retailers, mass uh, and uh, health stores like CVS, incorporating more kids' beverages into their, uh, into their stores? 
Yes, definitely. I mean, families go to Walmart. I think with our product in particular, because of the vitamins in the product, uh, we have 12 essential vitamins and minerals um, that, you know, CVS uh, pharmacy channel is very important for a brand like ours to be able to bring that health and functionality aspect, uh, you know, to consumers in pharmacy. So for sure there. And that's, you know, nationwide and um, with Walmart will be on a West Coast. Excellent. Yeah. And where where do you, are these kinds of products merchandised? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you'd want to be in a particular part of the store, but uh, where are you seeing uh, stores like CVS and, and uh, Walmart uh, putting your product? I mean, how are they merchandising it? So, um, you know, we're really, our product is a hybrid of two things. So we are a hybrid of a beverage for kids, but then we're also a hybrid of a vitamin component. So we're kind of disrupting um, the juice segment and the drink seg segment for kids and then offering a new way for kids to get their vitamins through a drink. So the first to do that. So in terms of, you know, CVS, we're actually going to be launching in a kids section with CVS. Um, and with Walmart, we will be in the drink section. Outstanding. Uh, well, you know, it was so great talking to you, Ash. I really appreciate the time. Uh, good luck with everything going forward. It sounds like you're already off to a tremendous start, probably right after the New Beverage Showdown, right? I mean, like that really put you on the map, didn't it? Uh, Definitely. Out Definitely. Outstanding. Well, good luck with everything going forward, and uh, please stay in touch. Thank you so much. Always love to see a uh, new beverage shoot on veteran. I mean, uh, it's such a it's, it's such a fun competition, and it's even more fun when I get to see these folks uh, really succeed at the things they were talking about on stage. Yeah, for sure. You know, I guess. Uh a little while after the new beverage show on you know they all have to go out into the uh yeah. the world and uh you know i think like you said it's cool to to check in and just hear you know what retailers they're in and and how it's going so um and you know i think she's done a really nice job creating that product absolutely all right we're gonna keep on keeping on okay i think we're going to keep on keeping on anyway. what choice do we have I don't, I don't think we have much of a choice actually but what i would say is that when we're keep on keeping on we're going to talk to of course, the one and only Anouk Gottlieb. How are you, Anouk? Hi, Ray. Hi, John. How, How are, you? are you? We're fantastic now that we're seeing you. How's everything going? Good. It's a long time no see, right, Ray? It's, indeed it is. Uh, we had a fantastic podcast interview featured on Taste Radio Insider. that came out a couple weeks ago with Anouk uh, and talking all about Belgian boys, which uh, is a pretty remarkable brand. Uh, tell us, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be um, exhibiting at Expo West. Of course. So, um, as you can see here, we have our new line of cookies. We have our almond butter cake, our cookie bars, our, our raspberry tart, and our chocolate caramel tarts. They're crispy, buttery cookies covered with raspberry, chocolate. They're just tiny, individually portioned bites and really delicious, crunchy cookies. Just that indulgence that you want when you're having that bad day. <laughs> totally. Uh, you know, indulgence is underrated, especially when you're eating cookies. Uh, where are these products going to be sold? So these products are going to be sold with uh, most of our retail partners. You're going to be see them, uh, seeing them at um, a few places in the near future, like uh, Cost Plus World Market. You will see them at Central Market and uh, many more retail partners. Uh, soon. Outstanding. Uh, how long were these in development? I mean, how long does it take to introduce a, a new brand extension like this? Um, they've been in development quite a while. Uh, a cute thing also I show you is they come individually wrapped with this little cute little icon. I'm not sure what you're seeing or not. Yeah. yeah. Um, see, having a bad day, just eat a cookie. <laughs> and that's what we're all about. So really, and anytime, pick me up. Shelby, you know, just with his uh, uh, hard eyes and really sharing all the love, the indulgence. And you know what? When you indulge, just make sure you indulge well. That's that's what we are all about at Belgium Boys. There you go. Absol love it. Absolutely. <laughs> Could go uh, for some now. Yeah, exactly. Um, how many products do you have in your line? Because, I mean, uh, I've seen a lot of different Belgian boys. I mean, how many products do you guys sell? So we have a wide assortment. And, you know, with Belgium Boys, I also mentioned it on Taste Radio. We are an indulgent brand. We're a staple for taste, quality, deliciousness, and, and really indulgence. So you can take us from breakfast, our crepes and pancakes, to our cookies, 
our snacks, we have our waffles and scoop waffles, we take them on the go and enjoy them. And the line we launched in 2019, our dessert, so we have cheesecakes and lava cakes, just they come in this recyclable glass ramekin that you can reuse after and just really take us through your day and join our adventure. Hey man, I, you know what? <laughs> 100%, Aruk, 100%. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Uh, missed you at Expo, but, but great Thank seeing you in yeah. New York City. This is awesome. Thanks to all the team. All right, see Thanks. you soon. <laughs> Bye. Uh, that Gotta love the Belgian boys. I know, it's kind of just mean to sit here and hear all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I, was telling, I, was, I was telling Aruk on, on, the, uh, t on Taste Radio Insider on our podcast, that I'm not a big cheesecake eater, but their cheesecake is pretty fantastic. It's like a, it's not too, too sweet. It's just, it's a perfect sweetness. It's also little. It's that also helps. little, which helps. helps out a lot. All right. Now we have from Kokimo, Alan Cohen, the CEO. How are you, Alan? Hi, how are you? You, uh, it's Coco Mio, actually. Coco Mio, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. No I'm worries. Coco Mio. <laughs> and I should have known because you sent us some wonderful product. Uh, thank you so much for the samples. Appreciate that. Uh, Brent, oh, thank you. I'm glad you, guys you, enjoyed are, it. you guys are pretty new, aren't you? Yeah, we're pretty new. Uh, actually, we went to Expo West last year and had like a little mock-up of our beverage. We found that, that people were really interested in our, in our product. So we started working into branding and packaging. And we were launching at Expo West, at Expo West but unfortunately it didn't happen. And I thank you guys for this opportunity. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your brand. Tell us about your product line. Yeah, sure. So Coco Mio, it's the real coconut experience. It's a blend of coconut water and pulp that it's richer than water, but it's lighter than a smoothie, but it's more refreshing than both. So it's it's practically the closest you'll get to a fresh coconut without, without climbing a tree, right? So it also has low natural sugar. It has seven grams in the original per bottle, uh, which is awesome. And we offer four delicious flavors. That is the original. There is just one ingredient that it's only coconut we have uh the coconut with pineapple that tastes just like a piña colada and we also have uh, one with cacao that's an adult chocolate milk and we also to get your kick in the morning you always can go with a cold brew coffee one <laughs> so where do these fit like in retail are these a coconut water are they with the smoothies the juices you know what what's sort of the target so yes, this is a premium coconut beverage uh, that it tastes, we believe in great tasting product. And we're looking into launch into the West Coast, into California and start into specialty grocery markets uh, channels. Uh, that's where we visualize our, our product. And another important thing that I wanted to comment is that we actually, we have great relationship with our growers in Mexico, in Guerrero. The coconuts come from Guerrero, from Acapulco and we support the, grow, the growers and their families, then we manufacture a product in our own state-of-the-art facility. Mm. Uh, we own the manufacturing plant. So that allows us to control all the supply chain and deliver, uh, deliver a great tasting product. Awesome. Nice. What's the price point on, on your products and what's the size of the bottles? So the size of the bottles is uh, 11.8 ounces and looking to MSRP at 5.99. Outstanding. Um, and in terms of function, what are you trying to get across? So we have low natural sugar, uh, usually Thai coconuts that are the more uh, beverage of coconuts that we see in the U.S. market tend to have more natural sugar than this. It has like half of that. Uh, so we offer the uh, low sugar and all the functions that the whole coconut brings. So the water, the pulp brings also the proteins, uh, electrolytes uh, and also good MCTs. Outstanding. Nice. Alan, great speaking with you. Good luck with everything going forward with Coco Mio and uh, hope to meet you at a trade show in the future. Sure. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Coco Mio. Yeah. You know, I didn't get to, did you get to try it? I did. It was pretty good. Yeah. yeah different. Good stuff. You know? Yeah. I haven't really, you don't come across too many products like that. So yeah, there are a couple that have had the, the meat and the water, but yeah, I not know, a lot. Tastes good. Yeah, tastes good. for sure. It was hydrating. Hydrating for <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, well, let's keep on moving on. And right now, we have John Becker. John Becker is the CEO of Ancient Harvest in Pamela. John, how are you? Great, how are you guys today? Great, great, nice backdrop. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> all days to prepare. Yes, you, got, you guys had a, a bunch, of, uh, bunch of news <laughs> that you're gonna be sharing at Expo. Tell us a bit about it. 
Yeah, we've been busy. Um, you know, Ancient Harvest is uh, the heritage brand in the natural food space. Been around for over 30 years, and we really decided this was the year to to inject some new life into the brand. Um, so I want I want to share four pieces of news. Um, first is uh, our new look and feel for the brand. Hopefully, you can see these packages I'm holding up here. So this is the old look that was on uh, that's mostly still on shelf now, but this is the new look that's currently uh, flowing its way into the marketplace right now. Uh, much stronger branding, more contemporary look, and better appetite appeal. Um, see that across our entire, our entire product line here you know, uh, you know, imminently. So really excited about that. Nice. So with that is the uh, overarching uh, kind of umbrella. We've also got two new product lines we're debuting. So uh, first one is our new veggie pasta. So we're extending our leadership in the gluten-free pasta space. Uh, this is a line of uh, lentils. Uh, cauliflower, kale, and spinach pasta. Uh, it's a full serving of vegetables. Um, it's a non-GMO project certified and available today from um, from your wherever you buy our products from. So super excited about this. The first retail you'll see this on the shelf at will be Sprouts first week of April. So cut this coming up. Superb. To go our uh, gluten-free pastas and our new veggie pasta, we've got our new protein pasta sauce. So. Um, new category for us, uh, but, uh, but a pretty obvious uh, complement to our gluten-free pastas. Um, this is the, you know, it's an organic product, one of the first entrants into the pasta sauce category with sort of, sort of what I would call positive nutrition added to it. So it's a plant-based protein source, uh, five to six grams of protein per serving, and that compares to about one to two for a typical uh, uh, pasta sauce. So super excited about this. We are still uh, finalizing the last details, but it will be ready to go in Q2. And what is the source of the uh, protein specifically? We're using pea protein. Pea protein. Okay. Uh, I don't see. Do, haven't seen too many protein infused uh, tomato sauces out there. Are you guys one of the only ones out there? Are you the first one out there? Yeah. There's um, there's one other one that we've seen. They're they're doing it a different way. They're using uh, lentils and white beans as their protein sauce. Um, but to our knowledge, we're going to be the first organic protein enhanced uh, pasta sauce out there. So completely plant based. Know, completely consistent with the, the ancient harvest brand. Uh, sure. yeah. Very cool. Uh, any news with Pamela's, uh, the company uh, yeah. Ancient Harvest just acquired? So that was the right, the fourth piece of news. So we just acquired the uh, the Pamela's brand as well, another uh, heritage brand in the uh, natural foods industry. Um, you know, great complement to the Ancient Harvest brand. Um, both both really resonate with the gluten free consumer. Um, you know, our, our playbook, I expect to be very similar to what we've done at Ancient Harvest. We're going to inject some new life into the Pamela's brand here over the next 12 months. And I expect to be hopefully seeing everybody live at Expo next year, uh, debuting a lot of new news on the Pamela's brand. Outstanding. Excellent. John, uh, thank you so much for the time. Great speaking with you and uh, good luck with everything going forward with Ancient Harvest and Pamela's. Yeah, thanks guys. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thanks. All right. All right, take care. Fun times. Yeah, I like that he's got the sauce and the pasta. You yeah, know. I mean, well, you can't have sauce without the pasta. You can't have pasta without the sauce. I guess you could use butter or like a pesto sauce. Plant-based butter. Plant-based butter. Yeah. Good point there. Good Same. point. Same. I haven't had a, I, I've never had a protein-infused uh, tomato sauce. Have you? Uh, can't say that I have either. I mean, like you said, relatively new things. So. Yeah, totally. All right, up next, we have Tal Garden, who's the CEO and founder of Fun Sesames. Tal, how are you? Hey, hi, guys. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, tell us a bit I about- the, I got the memo for the blaze. The you blaze. got the memo. <laughs> Not you, me, sorry. You are, you are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about Fun Sesames. What's the brand all about? So Fun Sesames is all about uh, organic tahini, ready to eat. We have uh, four different flavors. And the fun thing about it is that it goes, not only goes well with all uh, the popular a diet, but it also, you know, fun as a dip, dress it your salad with it, or just uh, on your spread, spread it on your bread. Uh, I do want to have like a shout out because I believe that not only buyers are watching us, and the buyers who needs to watch me, believe me, they heard enough about me. <laughs> uh, but I want to, I want to kind of like uh, say something for us, the food entrepreneurs, mainly the girls out there because I, I was mentioning myself. I don't know if you can see. Mm -hmm. Close enough. Close enough. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Can we yeah. see this one? Uh, it's a, a little, little, little blurry, but... Um... So it said, it said, owned and developed by a mother of three kids and a dog. Nice. So, 
kind of uh, saying, uh, hey, you're not out there. And uh, shout out to uh, women or any moms out there who want to join us. We're a group of six right here in uh, SoCal and uh, kind of helping each other, cheering each other, having a shoulder for each other. So if you want to reach out, find us on fansesames.com and we would love to help out as well as, you know, the entire food industry. I want to say that, uh, like three words, keep it simple, because <laughs> I feel like we are kind of uh, the needle of what's up next, not just the buyers who decide who comes to their stores or who's not, but also us, like to bring it simple, to bring it fresh and to eat food as it should be. Uh, I was amazed to see that my kids didn't know how the sesame flour looks like. You know, a lot of kids don't know how their peanut butter coming from the real peanuts who actually is not a nut is underneath the ground and just to be aware of that and to be able to, for us, the food entrepreneurs, to just amplify that as what we're doing. So, well, uh, you know, Expo West is a great place to amplify what's new with the company. Uh, tell us a bit about some of the products you were going to exhibit at the show. So my product is, uh, like I said, it's uh, organic, ready to eat tahini. Up until now, we have just a tahini paste. So what I did with it, it's like I tweak it a little bit with the Mediterranean spices, like zatar, turmeric, parsley, mint. Mm. All uh, good stuff. Yes. The, yeah, we have the harissa, which is very spicy and yummy, and the classic one. And the fun one is very sweet one, is uh, uh, with honey. It's called halva, halva spread. It's right. like one of my youth treats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Tal, I can't wait to try these products. Thank you so much for sending samples. Uh, it looks like you have a pretty great brand. And thank you so much for the great message. Really appreciate your time. Definitely. Of course. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. And right. I love your podcast uh, for the Taste Radio. Thank, thank you so you. much. I love the blazer. Well done. <laughs> Keep up with the good work. Thank right. you, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. <laughs> bye bye. I uh, love some love me some 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 fun sesame. Uh, I know all those. That's name. another one. Like all those, she's reading the flavors off. I'm like, ah oh, man. Yeah, some zatar. Love me some zatar. Harissa one. I don't know. Well, the zatar one. I yeah, for sure. None. There's none of those. I would turn my nose at. Indeed. Up next is Paul Tecker, who's the founder of H2 Ops. Paul, how are you? Hey guys. Cheers. Cheers. I'm doing well. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, very interesting space that you play in. Uh, for viewers at home who are not familiar, tell us a little about the brand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're the pioneer of the hop water category we launched five years ago and uh, really kind of came from a home brewing background where, you know, I was uh, brewing beer and growing hops in my backyard and that was the light bulb moment. The product probably needs some uh, explaining and it's it's brewed like a beer, but we just use the hops and because of that, it's naturally free of alcohol, calories, carbs and uh, gluten and it's just a fantastic alternative sparkling water or alternative non-alcoholic beer. So there's been, you know, I guess a little bit of momentum lately in the non-alcoholic beer space, you would say. Um, how's that been kind of working out for you? Is that something that, you know, has helped fuel growth? Yeah, you know, uh, five years ago, we, we weren't really aware of this whole sober, curious, dry January thing, and it's just kind of been a happy uh, accident. But, uh, you know, Nielsen came out with a study in, uh, uh, not too long ago, it says 66% of millennials are actively looking for non-alcoholic alternatives. And it's even higher Gen Z and even the general public, that's 47%. So it's really significant and it's really helped us out a lot. Where are your products uh, primarily sold? Yeah, Whole Foods is our biggest customer. Uh, we're multiple regions of uh, Whole Foods and uh, other natural food stores, but uh, we're doing fantastic in uh, BevMo and Total Wine and anywhere craft beer is sold and more and more, you know, I think our, our many of our customers are looking at this as sort of an alternative non-alcoholic beer. And, you know, how we're different is that, you know, we don't have the malts, which are the sugars or the yeast. And so, you know, people don't, maybe they don't realize it, but uh, non-alcoholic beer is just lots of carbs, lots of calories, and we have absolutely zero. Excellent. Fantastic. Now, over your right shoulder is a new flavor for the uh, for the brand that you're going to be exhibiting oh, yeah. at Expo West, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, last year at Expo West, you know, we started off about three years just our original and Expo West last year, we launched our grapefruit. It's quickly become, uh, you know, almost 45 to 50 percent of our, our sales. And so, you know, we, we look to the craft beer world for inspiration and I've been going to a lot of craft breweries and Mango has been the thing that, that a lot of the creative craft breweries have been pairing with hops. And so 
we thought we'd follow that lead and we came out with our, our hops mango that we were to launch and uh, we're really excited about it. But uh, appreciate you guys giving us an opportunity to, to share that with everybody. Well, I appreciate you sending some. I'm excited to try it. Uh, we haven't cracked it open yet, but definitely will after this, uh, after this session. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Paul, great speaking Thanks, Paul. with you as always. Uh, let's catch up again really soon. Fantastic, cheers guys. Cheers. cheers. I cheers with my notes. That's yeah, not really cheers with things. Yeah, I, I need like a, I need some some hop uh, um, some H U ops with that. Uh, you know, it's it's really interesting to see the development of this category. We've talked about this on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Sort of sober, curious, non-alcoholic opportunity. I'm sorry, non-alcoholic um, alternatives Hello. to beer, and it's exciting. Hello. All right, Hello. we've got we've got Chris Glab and Rick Goldberg, the co-owners of Wild Brine. How are you? Great, great. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much for being well, with us. Uh, you've got a bunch of news that you were planning to share at Expo West. Can you share it with us? Sure, we'd love to. Once again, I'm Rick Goldberg. This is Chris Clab. We're co-owners of, uh, co of Wild Brine. You probably know us from our wonderful ferments. Um, we have two of our ferments out today, our sauerkraut and one of our kimchi. Um, but we're here to talk about our new plant-based creamery. When our, we're in our new 21,000 square foot facility and here today to talk to you about it. So for us, this is a really exciting new venture and it's gonna expand the way that people think about wild brine. This is really the world premiere. Today is the world premiere of Wild Creamer. <laughs> Thank it's you for sure. <laughs> It's a line of plant-based alternatives to traditional dairy mainstays. And the reason we're doing it is because we're fermenters. We've been doing uh, fermentation since 2011 via our sauerkrauts and our kimchi, and we can bring fermentation to these products, which we really believe raises the bar of flavor for these dairy uh, these dairy alternatives. First product we want to talk about today is our brie, and Chris is my Vanna White, and he's going to open up uh, <laughs> open up the brie and show it to you. So what we've done is we've created a really really nice, very traditional brie. Other than the fact that it's plant based, we even figured out how to get a nice bloomy rind on it. So it's a beautiful beautiful product, and that rind is. Traditionally, what you would see on the brie, it's a penicillium candidum. We just develop it on a vegan substrate to keep this whole line vegan. Very cool. The next item in our line is a plant-based butter. It's an all-purpose butter. You use it as you would any dairy butter. Spread it on toast, saute vegetables, bake with it. Works in the very same proportions. The third item is our cultured cream cheese. This is a very traditional cream cheese where we get that slightly mild tang that you're used to in the traditional dairy product. Then we move on to our dips. We've created four dips. They're very much creamy style, just like what you'd expect out of a great dairy type dip. Uh, the first one is our spinach dip. In this product, we actually use fresh spinach. Next is our chipotle lime. Uh, we have a nice hint of chipotle smoke, a touch of lime. Just a beautiful product. Um, next is our uh, buttermilk, and if you've ever, or our, our red buttermilk ranch, and if you've ever try to create a vegan buttermilk, it's pretty difficult, but we've created this wonderful buttermilk formula that we use, it, use to flavor this product. It's just great. And then finally, a French onion, which is a very traditional dip, one of the more popular ones. Um, and it's also, once again, plant-based vegan, but it has that nice creamy texture to it. It tastes just like a, like a creamy dairy dip. Let us tell you how wild creamery is different. When I say us, I mean Rick. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta I gotta ask because we only have a few more seconds left. Uh, do you, can can people get these in retailers at this point? Are you guys in retail sh stores with the new line with the new brand? We are in a limited distribution at about 20 25 stores here in Northern California. Come uh, April 1st, we'll be uh, shipping our brie through our distributor network and will be available throughout the entire country. If we have just a few seconds, can I say the one thing that makes the line different? I, I, I unfortunately can't get into it right now. We're out of time, but what's your website in case people want to get in touch with you? Wildbrine.com. Wildbrine.com. Outstanding. Chris, Rick, this has been great. <laughs> uh, the new line looks amazing. We have some in our kitchen and looking forward to trying it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. It. All Thank right. You. Thanks again for joining yeah. us. All right. It does look really interesting. You know, I've never had a plant-based brie. I know 
there's uh, the few of them out there or a couple yep. of them out there right now, but uh, that one looks great branding too. Yeah, no, I mean, we have it sitting in our kitchen here. It yes. definitely looks so well, nice. Well, it, it's so. just so you know, it's in the refrigerator. We're not, we're not leaving it out. Yeah, 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 of course. So, okay, up next is Christy Knowles, who's the CEO of Mother Raw. Christy, how are you? Hi guys, nice to see you. <laughs> Good to see you as well. Uh, what is Mother Raw? Well, first of all, welcome to Mother Raw. Beautiful okay. backdrop. Yeah, a warm welcome from Toronto, Canada. Um, oh. Mother Raw, what is Mother Raw? Um, so for those who aren't familiar, Mother Raw is uh, an impressive line of 20 varieties. Uh, we have salad dressings, condiments, dips, um, which are all organic, non-GMO, plant-based, and ridiculously delicious and clean label. Very cool. And so uh, at Expo West, did we, did we, did we were going to have a booth or were we just going to walk the show floor? Oh, no. We had a beautiful booth and it was already set up, ready to go. Oh, boy. Bummer. Yeah. But tell us about some of the products that you're going to be exhibiting at your booth. Yeah, for sure. So we were going to have a range of products there, including two new ones, which I'll, I'll be telling you about. But we were going to have a, a delicious array of our different varieties, as I just mentioned, of dressing dips and condiments. Um, and at the show, specifically, what we were doing was introducing our two new varieties, which are right here in glass bottles, because everything that we do is 100% recyclable glass, glass bottles. Um, and these are two new tahini-based dressings. One is lemon turmeric, so super bright and zingy and fresh. And uh, this was actually voted as a consumer favorite, so they wanted us to launch this variety. And then in addition, we created a creamy tahini, which is a beautiful blend of savory from the tahini with a little sweetness from maple syrup. Uh, amazing stuff. I saw the, uh, the lemon tahini variety in our kitchen. Thank you for sending that. It looks pretty amazing. Um, what's the price point of those products? Uh, the price point in the U.S. is about $4.99, of course, depending on the retailer, of which right now we're in 3,500 stores and we have a pipeline of 6,000 that we're set up with. Very cool. And is that mostly in Canada or in the U.S. or sort of split between the two? No, um, it's actually um, predominantly moving into the U.S. So we do have fantastic distribution in Canada, but our real focus has been expansion into the U.S. So we continue to build uh, build the U.S. market. So it's about 60% of our volume is coming from the U.S. right now. Interesting. Uh, we recently had an entrepreneur just on with us talking about her tahini dips. Uh, do you feel like consumers are getting a better understanding of tahini and what it is and what it can do to food or what uh, it can add to food, excuse me? Yeah, absolutely. So the, one of the reasons that we launched the tahini salad dressings is because, first of all, uh, sesame as an ingredient is continuing to rise. It's got a lot of, it, there's a lot of influence in, influences coming now um, where we see tahini in a lot of products. Um, and that was one of the reasons. And the other is that basically any salad bowl recipe that you see on Instagram, for example, has a recipe on the market. So we saw those. Uh, those as two opportunities. Fantastic. Christy, uh, great stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Really well done on your backdrop there and your, and your foreground as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and hope to catch up with you again really soon. Thank you very much. Thank Bye, you. guys. Outstanding. Love the virtual booth. I love the virtual booth too, especially when you work hard at it. Like that. I mean, that, not that everyone hasn't been working hard at it. Everyone's done a great job with their booths. Uh, Christy, that's a really nice one. That's a, I like the plants and everything too. Yeah, and another you know product that looks I don't know. Again, I'm like sitting there listening to this like <laughs> getting ready for your salad tonight. Well, I might I might race you to the kitchen to steal that. that no, it's already in my uh, like already in my office. Protect. All right, up next we have David Israel, who's the CEO and founder of Good Planet. David, how are you? Hey, great. How are you guys doing today? Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. That's a big piece that you have in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want it to stand out, that's for sure. <laughs> now, tell us a bit about the uh, pizza and uh, how it's going to figure into factor into your uh, work at Expo West. Well, I mean, this was our big launch, uh, was to really uh, present this at Expo West. So uh, it was something that we worked with uh, to get together with Beyond Meats and, uh, or Beyond Meats, excuse me, and have this great pizza for the, for the buyers to see and uh, get it into the marketplace. I mean, it has our cheese, a uh, new gen cheese, so it's much more meltable. It has a better texture that replicates real mozzarella. So it's an amazing product. It does sound amazing. Um, that's, that's a great collaboration with uh, Beyond Meat. I mean, how long did that take to, to work out? Uh, 
Not very long. Uh, literally, it was about 30 days. Wow. Uh, we, we, you know what? They were anxious. We were anxious. Uh, we knew that, you know, we wanted to have their product on our pizza. If we were to, this is kind of a foray out of uh, what we were we really focused on, which is plant-based cheese. Uh, and this was a great opportunity to have a partner like that to be able to, to, to bring to the public and get a great product on the shelf. Nice. Uh, how much do they sell for the pizzas? You know, SRP would be nine ninety nine. Uh, should be in the marketplace by May. Uh, I mean, there's, believe it or not, there's a huge demand for frozen pizza right now. So, <laughs> uh, the, honestly, God, the manufacturers can't keep up, and uh, so you know we're kind of losing our place in line. But we'll be we'll be ready to go in May for sure. Very cool, outstanding. Uh, you've got some other products with you too. These are your the original products, yes? Yeah, we started in the you know with the plant based cheese, all about creating the the great cheese alternative. Uh, that has meltability, texture, flavor, that really gave the, the consumer the, you know, the real cheese uh, experience. And, you know, great for our environment, you know, animal kindness, all these things. But we're all about really creating the next best cheese all the time. We're always innovating. And again, you know, we're at Expo West, we're excited to show our new formulas of our, our meltable cheeses, but really excited to show this uh, great product and collaborates with Beyond Meat. What's the base of your cheese? What do you use as ingredients? Yeah, it's allergen-free. We're coconut oil-based. Uh, and again, it's allergen-free, non-GMO, kosher, halal. I mean, we kind of check all the great boxes so that we appeal to all consumers. And, uh, you know, in food service, I mean, it's really pretty clean. So, uh, yeah, it's a very clean, great product. It, you know, it almost sounds better than cheese, right? <laughs> 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 well... You know what? It's better for our environment. It's better for animals. It's better for you because it's healthier. It's third the calories, third the fats, no cholesterol. So yeah, you know, could be. It's a great alternative. How about that? Fantastic Excellent. stuff, David. Thank you so much. Looking forward to trying the uh, Good yeah. Planet sausage pizza soon. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, indeed. Uh, hope to catch up. Hope to catch up again really soon. Well, appreciate it. Thanks very much, you guys. All yeah. right. Good Planet. And some good plant-based cheese to go with it. Yeah, and I love the, you know, Beyond Meat uh, kind of getting ahead of this stuff, getting their product yeah. into other products. And, you know, he seems super excited by that. I'd love to try that. So. Yeah, it's really interesting because you see Beyond Meat in some fast food restaurants, but now you're seeing it in CPG products as well. Well, and one that's kind of positioned as a better for you, high quality product. So. Exactly. All right. Up next is Stacey Waters, who's the CEO and founder of High Peak. Stacey, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks so much for putting this forum together. It's great. Well, well thank you Thanks. so much for joining us. Uh, Hi, Peaks. So you guys were going to be at Expo West. Tell us about some of the products you're going to be showcasing. So what we are going to show were our High Peaks plant-based sausages. And we created these products um, because we're realizing that more and more people are seeing the benefits of a vegan and plant-based diet. Maybe they're eating plant-based all the time, maybe just a couple days a week. But really out in the market, there are not that many meat alternatives that are made from real everyday ingredients um, that are packaged conveniently um, and just made with that short list of, of ingredients that um, are healthy. And so, a lot of people are using a plant-based diet because they are looking for healthier options. So, so that's where we came in. So we have four great flavors of plant-based sausage. We have a raw mushroom. Sunrise Trail Mix and a, a sweet apple flavor. So it's really great for any meal occasion. And it's, um, it's just, you know, the healthier choice for meat, for meat alternatives out there right now. You mentioned the ingredients. What are the ingredients in your plant-based sausages? Um, so we went with a wheat-based um, sausage because that's really the oldest form, uh, most reliable form of a meat alternative and it can be made really, really simply. And then we combine that with sunflower seed oil and flax seeds, and then just regular ingredients that you would find every day. Um, so wild mushrooms, oregano, basil, we use apples, we use um, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds in our trail mix sausage. So we're really looking to get these whole ingredients um, that really can give you a balanced diet and uh, fill you up and kind of fit that, that part of that center of the plate for you, for your, for your diet. And where can one find uh, these sausages? Where can one find High Peak Sausage? So uh, we're available in some select retailers all over the country right now. But we only just launched in August, so that's uh, really why we were at Expo West launching the product line. Um, you can find us at Harris Teeter, 
at uh, Rayleigh's supermarkets in California, at Lazy Acres, at Heinen's supermarkets, and um, many other great independent retailers. But we're hoping to introduce our products to everybody and um, hopefully have a, a wide selection um, in great retailers across the country sometime soon. Very cool. And what's the price point on each one, each package? Um, they range for about um, around five ninety nine a package. So it's really um, meant for everyday use. These are, are um, you know, healthy plant-based foods to make a regular part of your diet. Outstanding. Well, I can't wait to try some. Uh, thank you so much for sending some samples. And uh, thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for sharing your products with us here on the live stream. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All I right. Really See you next time. Uh, more innovation in the plant-based space. Always this, uh, you know, great to see new products coming in, and it seems like uh, coming in with a flavor profile and a texture that's similar to that of the quote-unquote real thing. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this for a couple of years, but yeah. like plant-based has come a long way, and I don't know, you know, it seems like every year it just like companies are pushing the envelope a little further. So, you know, I don't know, seeing like a plant-based brie, for example, mm -hmm. that's, you know, they've recreated like the texture and, you know, the skin to the brie, like that, that's kind of cool. So Indeed it is, yeah. All right, folks, we're gonna go to a quick break. It's gonna take about three minutes. Uh, John is going to step out of his chair and we're gonna be replacing it. New guest. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna be replacing it with another host. Uh, you, might familiar, you might recall that she has been part of our Taste Radio program. I'll leave it as a surprise. But uh, in three minutes, we'll be right back. Don't touch that dial or keypad or mouse at this point. <laughs> All right, we're back here on the Elevator Talk live stream. I'm Ray Latif, the editor and producer of Taste Radio. With me is Melissa Traverse, one of our esteemed brand specialists. You might have recognized uh, Melissa from Taste Radio, where she's been one of our guest sure. hosts. Fantastic stuff, fantastic contributions. Thank you. Melissa, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Very good, very good. For folks at home who are not familiar with you, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, um, my name is Melissa Traverse, <laughs> and um, BevNet and Nosh is my 34th job. So I've had many, many jobs, and in addition to being a flight attendant, an organic farmer, and a pastry cook, I also spent about 11 years at Whole Foods Market before coming over here. Ah, it seems you know a lot about Whole Foods then. That's exactly right. If you want the secrets, Get in touch with you. That's What's your right. email address? Um, it's mtraverse at bevnet.com. Easy enough. All right. Good stuff. Let's get to our first guest of the second half of our program. And that is, well, we'll find out in a moment who that is, actually. Uh, mtraverse at bevnet.com is your email address. Um, do you, get, do you t get in touch with people on Instagram, too? Is that a good way to get to, to talk to people? Absolutely. Melissa underscore Traverse. Uh, there it is. And now to our first guest of the second session. That's Ian Walker, who's the founder and president of Hippie Snacks. Ian, how are you? 
I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very, very good. Uh, tell us a bit about Hippie Snacks. Sure. Hippie Snacks is a better for you snack brand made from real food, minimally processed snacks that just taste great. So, for example, we make things from cauliflower and avocado and almonds, those sort of snacks. Awesome. Awesome. And what were you going to be exhibiting at Expo West? Well, we uh, our main products are the cauliflower crisps and avocado crisps. And we were going to be presenting, we've got a, a new uh, plant-based cheese cauliflower crisp, which we were going to launch when we launched last year, but it took us a long time to get the plant-based cheese to taste really good. So we're going to launch that, and we have a whole new line of um, almond crisps. So almond as the first ingredient, the main ingredient that that's uh, that it's made from. Very cool. Yeah. And who is your target consumer? Really, anybody that's looking for snacks made from a real food, um, and you know that wants that convenience to be able to eat those foods that are good for you that you get excited about, but in a more convenient format. And how have diet trends such as the keto movement, the paleo movement, how have that played? How have those played into your success? Uh, well, certainly, probably a bit more paleo because I wouldn't classify ourselves as keto. We don't quite qualify on that side. I mean, we really are about focusing on the whole food. So, make products from the real food. So, our cauliflower crisps, for example, are is whole cauliflower ground as the first ingredient because we're the manufacturer ourselves. So, we focus a little bit more on putting in the real foods. And a lot of the tenets of the paleo movement kind of go along with that. Nice. Why is it called Hippie Snacks? Where'd the name come from? Uh, we just thought it represented a bit of a celebration about natural um, kind of back to the earth kind of movement. Um, and that just sort of fit with some of the progressive products that we were trying to break out. Plus we're a bit, we're a bit uh, kind of going against the grain. So we're okay with being a bit of a rebel. Literally. Sure. Yeah. Uh, where are the products sold? Where can people pick them up? Uh, well, down the West Coast, we, we sell in um, Sprouts and um, Thrive and Amazon, and then stores like New uh, New Seasons and Erewhon down the coast. Primarily, we're West Coast because we're a Canadian company that's just really recently entered the U.S. Cool. What's the price point on these uh, new products in particular? Uh, they're all four ninety nine. Four ninety nine, and the bag sizes. It's, uh, sorry, I always think grams instead of ounces. Two and <laughs> That'll happen if you're in, in Canada, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Ian, thank you so much for sharing uh, the uh, information about the brand and the new product line with us here on the Elevator Talk live stream. And uh, please stay in touch. Well, thank you so much for featuring all of us emerging brands. We really appreciate that. Outstanding. We will. Appreciate everything you're doing. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Good stuff. Great stuff. From Ian, yeah, I'd look forward to trying those products. Uh, I'm uh, interested to, to see how they, they crunch. Like, uh, you know, certain crisps uh, agree with me and some are a Those look like a crunchy they, crisp. They do look like a crunchy <laughs> crisp. Yes. Up next, we have Lauren Picasso, who's the CEO of Cure Hydration. Lauren, how are you? Hi, everyone. Good Hi. to see you. Uh, Good to see you, too. Tell us a bit about Cure Hydration. Yeah, so Cure Hydration is an organic hydration mix that is based on a formula that was originally developed by the World Health Organization and is proven to hydrate as effectively as an IV drip. One pack has four times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks like Gatorade, but there's no added sugar or any artificial ingredients at all. The formula is made with a base of organic coconut water and pink Himalayan salt. Whereas other brands in the market like Liquid IV and Hydrant are made primarily of cane sugar and synthetic minerals like potassium chloride. Cure is designed to help you recover from a tough workout, a hangover, a long flight, or in our current climate right now, an extremely contagious flu. Um, the brand launched last year originally on e-commerce sites like Thrive Market and Amazon, and we'll be expanding in 2020 to 3,000 CVS stores Whole Foods California and JetBlue Airlines. At Expo West, we were actually planning on debuting our reformulation and packaging refresh of our three flavors. I'll show them to you now. Um, Main Squeeze Lemon, Wild Thing Berry Pomegranate, and Golden Hour Ginger Turmeric. All of our hydration mixes come in this convenient stick pack, um, which is actually inside of the 14 serving pouch I just showed you. Um, it is also available in a 20 serving box for individual consumption. The price point is $19.99 per pouch or about $142 per individual pack. So I'll stop there and see if you guys have any questions. 
Uh, well, you covered quite a bit. Um, thank you so much for doing that. And tell us a bit about, you know, when you go to an expo, you know, how do you talk to a retailer and what's the right retailer for your brand? So the right retail, we have a wide range of retailers um, that are right, right for our brand. Everything from the natural food channel, um, our brand is organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, um, and has no sugar added in any of the ingredients. Um, so we fit very well in um, a, a grocery store, especially a grocery store with an, a natural food focus. Um, we also work very well in um, a health food store. Um, so in any sort of independent store um, also works well. Um, pharmacy is very strong for us. Uh, we did a pilot with CVS over the summer and we're now expanding to 3,000 stores. Wow, that's really great. Uh, and where in CVS are merchandised? Sorry? Where in CVS are you merchandised? Where on shelf can folks find your product? So we're going to have a freestanding shelf that's going to be a hydration fixture um, with Cure and then there'll be water bottles on the bottom of the shelf. So because the, the, the product is a powder, it can be merchandised in a wide variety of places throughout the store, whether that's at checkout, in the grocery section, or supplements because it is in a powder form. Outstanding. Lauren, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us on the live stream. Really appreciate it, and uh, good luck going forward with the uh, brand. Thanks so much. All right, good stuff. It's a great product. Yeah, indeed. And uh, I'm going to have to go to our local CVS across the uh, way to see if uh, we're one of the 3,000 stores that she's in. I think I might have seen it in there, actually. I can't. I, th I think I did as well. Yeah, yeah. The freestanding uh, case, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see. Oh, outstanding. Up next, we've got Jamie Danik and Matt Witherall, who is the CEO and president of Hum Kombucha. How's it going, Ray? Uh, it's going great. How about yourself? Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, a lot of talk about uh, your new product line that you're going to be launching at Expo West or exhibiting at Expo West. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, so it's Hum Zero. Hum Zero is a zero sugar, plant-based, live raw, shelf-stable kombucha. And basically we're giving consumers what they want. Consumers want less sugar, they want super healthy stuff, and they want it to taste great. And that's what Hum Zero is in all in the package. Amazing. This is something you probably explain a lot, but um, if a kombucha relies on a SCOBY to consume sugar for fermentation, how does that play into a zero sugar kombucha? Yeah, we, use, we, we, we brew kombucha. We have sugar and we have kombucha cultures and we put them all together. But the difference in this is we brew all the sugar out. So the end, our base kombucha has no sugar. And is it sweet at all? Or is there any sweetness to the product? Yeah, we use plant-based sweeteners, um, which make it actually much sweeter than you would imagine. It actually tastes a lot sweeter than you would think it does being a zero sugar product. And what are those sweeteners? Uh, it's a proprietary blend. It has some monk fruit, some allulose, no stevia. We don't, we're not big on the aftertaste. You won't get much, if any, of any type of aftertaste. This tastes like a sweet product. Great. Uh, and uh, Matt, if you want to join in, maybe you can tell us a bit about uh, where these products are going to be sold. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Nice to see you again. You too. Uh, we're, we're, we're piloting um, in, in six markets where there's a little more heavy marketing activity. So Southern Cal, San Diego, LA, uh, Northwest, Seattle, Portland, uh, Denver, and then on the East Coast, Bal uh, Baltimore, Washington. And that's where we're, we're piloting. But certainly if you're a retailer in another area, uh, give us a call and we'd love to figure out how to work with you. And <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have the first zero sugar kombucha on the market, right? As far as we know, the first one in the U.S., yep. Yeah. How long has it been in development? Two years. Um, first year, we just couldn't get it to taste good, so that was uh, we just couldn't figure it out. And then the last nine months to a year is when we've really been, we finally figured out how to make it taste great and then how to figure out how to mass produce it. I'm interested to see, I mean, is, was that a big thing that people were asking for? Were they asking for a zero sugar? Because it's interesting with the kombucha, oftentimes they're, they're drinking it for function. They're drinking it for, for gut health. Um, but was sugar a big reason why some people weren't drinking the product? Absolutely. Well, as you, as you think about it, people just want you know healthy, tasty beverages, right? So certainly things that taste, that certainly things that are, are good for you. And you know we've got B twelve and probiotics, and kombucha in general is good for you. Um, and this has to taste good. So people who weren't in the category um, want it, want stuff that's healthy and tasty. People that are in the category, there are a bunch of trier rejectors, and there are also people who are in the category. And they, do, they like it, they just won't drink as many because it has some sugar. So they asked, hey, how can we get some lower sugar? That's how we started with our 5G, which is our lower sugar line. And now we have a zero sugar line as well. 
Outstanding. Well, looking really, uh, looking forward to trying the product. Uh, congratulations on the line and the launch of the line, and uh, hope to catch up with you both really soon. Right on. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Bye. Cheers, indeed. Yep. Bye. 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 Uh, I wonder if we can get that uh, on draft uh, at our bar. I would like to give that a shot. A zero sugar kombucha sounds right up my alley. It really does. Uh, you know, and I do think that has been a sticking point for some people to get into the category is sometimes the high sugar count of kombucha. Absolutely. Yeah. Up next, there he is, Dan Klein of Tiesta Tea, one of the co-founders and the CEO. How are you, Dan? Good. How are you guys? Great to see you. Uh, Tiesta Tea, obviously, you guys make uh, ready to drink tea or ready to drink cold brew tea because you can see the bottle. Uh, tell us about some of the innovation you're going to be exhibiting at Expo West. So yeah, we were excited to see everyone at Expo West. Obviously, uh, great to be here uh, with you guys digitally. But you know, really, the the best thing about this product is uh, because of the cold brew process. So it's actually cold brewed for about two to three hours in a sixteen hundred gallon tank, and then at the end, all we add is a splash of juice. So this is my mango. It's our best selling flavor. Has a splash of uh, passion fruit juice, and so with the cold brew process. Because of the yield, it's a nice, strong, smooth flavor. Um, it allows you to have the super low sugar count. So uh, a lot of people say Maui Mango is super sweet, but really it only has five grams of sugar uh, per 12 ounce serving. So this is our brand spanking new 40 ounce bottle. Uh, it's launching in five divisions of Kroger uh, starting in three weeks. Um, so we're, we're getting those first shipments out now. Uh, brand new item. Uh, new innovation to the category, about a five ninety nine to six ninety nine retail. Um, there's a lot of activity right now in the tea category, uh, especially in the dairy section, where you're seeing declines in some of the more traditional categories. And so uh, we really think we're going to fill a nice void in the marketplace, um, especially not just cold brew and being a premium product, but also glass bottle, um, you know, so better for the environment and uh, and made with a lot of love and care. Have your consumers been asking for a 40 ounce bottle for a while? Yeah, yeah, that, that's actually why we uh, developed it. Because, you know, one of the things that you think about when, when you drink uh, iced tea at home is, you know, a lot of people like to make a pitcher of iced tea. So, you know, when, when you talk about a 40 ounce, it's you can, you know, feed the whole family with it, essentially. And, and so uh, this format size has traditionally done really well in tea, um, but it's mainly been kind of your lower end players. Uh, or some of your larger players. Um, so we're excited to get into the category and, and, and you know disrupt a little bit. Yeah, you've got some distribution news to share as well. Uh, where is TSAT going to be where it hasn't been? So yeah, 600 Kroger stores starting in uh, about three weeks. So that'll be the Atlanta wow. division, uh, the Michigan division, uh, King Supers, uh, Roundies, and our hometown favorite Mariano's uh, in Chicago. So we're really looking forward to that. Very cool. You also made a change in the formulation of the products too, from what I understand. Yeah, you know, we were able to actually figure out how to bring the sugar count down even more. Um, just playing around with the recipe. When we first developed this product, uh, it launched in Target and, and we had a really quick development process. So over time, we were, we were able to refine the recipe, you know, really get it down so that it, it had just that right amount of sweetness um, to keep that sugar count as low as possible. Outstanding. Dan, you know, it's always great catching up with you. Thanks so much for joining us on the live stream and uh, good luck going forward with the 40. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Cheers. 40's all day. <laughs> 40s all day. Cheers. Cheers. The, only, the only thing better than a bottle of Tiesta tea would be a 40 ounce bottle of Tiesta I, uh, tea. 100%. I'm sure that factored into the decision to make it. Um, have you had the Maui mango variety? I have. It's fantastic. It's really good. It's yeah. very, very tasty. It's surprising how much mango flavor they can get into it. It's packed in there. Yeah. All right, up next, we have Beatrice Wolnerham, who is the CEO of B Squeeze. Beatrice, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Did I get your last name right or did I butcher it? <laughs> it well, it's Wolnerman. Wolnerman, um, excuse me, yes. Enough. I said ham, didn't I? I said Wolnerham. It's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one for me, for someone who's a little jerky all the time. But anyway, uh, <laughs> tell us a bit about B Squeeze. Sure. Um, so I have a lemonade company called Bee Squeeze. Um, and I have a little bit of an interesting story. My husband and I um, found this piece of land in downtown Detroit on the DeQuinter Cut. It's an urban bike path. Um, and it was for sale and we wanted to do something fun for the summer. So we created this little lemonade stand down there and thought we'd have a fun summer pop up and sell some lemonade and, and get our name out there. Um, but it totally blew up. It's now you know a, a real company. We're in 11 states and 
We're so excited. We have um, two delicious flavors of lemonade. We have classic and we have pink rose. All natural, no artificial anything, no preservatives. Um, just your good, fresh tasting lemonade in a bottle, the kind you remembered from when you were a kid. But you know, we found a way to capture that and you know, put it put it in a bottle with some interesting twists. Very I can cool. I can see how this would be appealing to just about everybody, but who would you say your <laughs> core consumer is? Um, I mean, you know what? It, it really does appeal to anyone. Um, but I would I would say millennials for sure. You know, anyone from twenty to to forty really. Um, you can drink it yourself. You can give it to your kids. It's just you know, there's so many trendy drinks, and we just wanted to get back to basics with, you know, your good old old fashioned lemonade. Uh, you know, we've seen, there's a bunch of lemonades on the market. The category is a uh, pretty good size. Uh, yeah. How do you see yourself as differentiated from other products? I mean, is it through your flavors? Because you do have some pretty interesting flavors. We do. Um, so we're working on some other interesting flavors. Um, at Expo West, we were planning on launching a purple lavender flavor. Um, our pink lemonade has some floral notes of rose in it. Um, but we're kind of different in the fact that we just are using real basic ingredients. We didn't want to use anything trendy. We just have pure cane sugar, um, but we do have a third less than other leading brands. And it's just, you know, good basic ingredients. Now, did you say that uh, your piece of land that you bought in Detroit, is that where you make the product as well? Or is that just where your offices are? No. Um, so the piece of land we bought, it's actually funny. It's up a five foot retaining wall and it's only about 600 square feet. So nobody wanted it and we just thought we would do something fun there. Um, but we are based in Eastern Market in Detroit. Ah, very cool. What's the response from your community been? Oh, it's it's been amazing. I mean, it really is something that can appeal to, to anyone and everyone and it kind of brings everyone together um, and just puts a smile on your face. It puts a smile on my face. Uh, what's, <laughs> <laughs> what's the price point on your products? Um, it retails for about two ninety nine. Right on. Awesome. Now, do you go by B or Beatrice? Because I have Beatrice on my uh, sheet here. <laughs> what, whatever you want to call me is fine. All right. Well, I, I started with Beatrice, so I'll call you Beatrice for the uh, yeah. for the ending here. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck with uh, the you. brand, and uh, please stay in touch. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Indeed. Good stuff. <laughs> I, I haven't been able to uh, get my hands on some of that, but I'd love to. I would as well. I think it would put a smile on my face. Yes, indeed, it would. Uh, lemonade's always a, it's it's a good drink to make you feel. It's like it's a like like Beatrice was talking about. It's a good old school drink. Nostalgic. That just, it brings totally, people together. Totally. This gentleman brings a lot of people together. His name is Ben Mann. He's the CEO of Harmless Harvest. Ben, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Very cool. That's a cool T-shirt you got there. Is that a T-shirt or a ah. long? There you go. Nice. Harmless Harvest about uh, nine times. Well done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Expo West, a big show for uh, your company. Tell us about some of the innovation that you're going to be showcasing there. Yeah, we're excited to be here to share a little bit of the innovation. Thanks for hosting us. Um, I would imagine most of you, I mean, certainly you're familiar with us, but uh, most of us are most familiar with our coconut water um, and that side of the business. Uh, but I'm going to talk not, not only about innovation on coconut water, but also some plant-based uh, innovation on the dairy side. So I'll come back to that in just a moment. On the coconut water side, we're really excited. This is the first time ever for us to do something like this. So one of the challenges we, we thought about and we looked at as we talked to the team was, how do we bring a little variety in uh, hydration? How do we start uh, doing that? But do it in a very harmless way, right? So we have this proprietary microfiltration process where we don't cook the coconuts. And oftentimes when others have done variety, uh, they add a lot of juices to overcome the, the taste of the coconut water to get a very good tasting product. And we love the taste of our coconut water and so many people love it. And so the challenge we gave to the team is let's embrace the taste of our coconut water and the quality of that coconut water. But how do you add a hint of some other refreshing hydrating flavors? And so what we've come up with is just that hint of um, coconut water. And so what we do is we use the same proprietary process. We just take watermelon, microfilter it with our coconut water. You still taste the beautiful taste of our coconut water, but you get that hint of watermelon. So we have a watermelon, strawberry rose, and cucumber mint are the three flavors that we're launching this month. On the other side of the equation, we launched into plant-based dairy. So uh, most, you know, when you when you make a yogurt, uh, you generally start with a liquid, and most companies start with a liquid that's been pre-pasteurized, and then they add all sorts of gums and stabilizers, and they make their yogurt. Well, we decided to do something very different. 
So that same coconut that we punch to take the water out, we actually open up and scoop the meat. We use that freshly scooped meat and we grind it. So when we make the, the yogurt, the spoonable yogurt, we grind it and we add just a few simple ingredients like a, a little bit of water, cultures, tapioca starch, and then you get this wonderful fresh, we think very fresh tasting yogurt uh, that is you know, delicious and really creamy as that kind of dairy-like experience from a creaminess standpoint and a great flavor. Um, we also then do it on the drinkable side. So we grind that same go uh, coconut meat, we add coconut, uh, the coconut water from our coconut and culture it and you have this wonderful dairy-free drinkable yogurt that has the probiotics in it. So uh, wonderful line. We just launched uh, the Spoonable Yogurt in Whole Foods in January and it comes out of exclusivity. Um, and it's off to an amazing start. We've really had to ramp up uh, production to keep up with demand. We're really excited about both, both platforms on the dairy-free side. Amazing Ready? stuff, Ben. Unfortunately, we're out of time, man. You really, uh, you told us a lot and I really appreciate it. Um, harmlessharvest.com to find out it's all about the entire product line or to learn more about the product line? Yes, harmlessharvest.com. Outstanding. Ben, great seeing you again and uh, hope to catch up again with you really soon. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. That was amazing. Ben, ben really went through it. I, we've had him on Taste Radio Insider. We've had him on our live stream studio at BevNet Live. Always a great person to speak with um, and love what he's doing with Harmless Harvest. It's growing beyond that coconut water as he was talking about. Their growth is impressive. It really is, Ben. Yeah. All right. Up next, we have Sarita Lopez, who's the owner of Cactus. I think we're just going to be talking with, uh, we're just going to be doing some audio here. Uh, great. Yeah, Sarita. Um, tell us a little bit about Cactus. Yeah, hi guys. Sorry about the uh, visual. <laughs> no, no problem. I uh, first started a cactus water business in 2017, and after two years of constant demos and listening to feedback, I reformulated and rebranded into Cactus. Uh, the feedback was they wanted it to still be organic, um, but they wanted a little bit more flavor, a little bit more sweetness while still saying low sugar, and wanted more to pull over on the nutrition label. So I did all that and now have three SKUs that just launched on March 1st um, with a lime, papaya, and watermelon flavor. Very cool. I'm not, I don't see too many papaya flavors in beverages. Why did you choose that one? We were playing around with some um, different flavors and uh, actually my, I work with an incubator and they threw out papaya and it was just amazing. It was, everything is really light and clean tasting um so it's incredibly refreshing and yeah the papaya just works really really well with that cactus uh that cactus juice and how does cactus a cactus based beverage fit into consumer trends you're still doing that plant-based water um i'm very low sugar i'm only f uh, five grams of sugar for the entire 12 ounce can and i'm st staying hard on that hydration factor um and i also have antioxidants so that's something that i've been kind of paying attention to with uh, what consumers are looking for uh what's the incubator you work with and you know how they helped you uh, get off the ground and develop your brand yeah it's called cascadia managing brand okay and um i was i've been following them for a while and um, they were the ones that actually kind of gently suggested that I should look into reformulating because the cactus water I had previously was doing pretty well, just um, not, I wasn't hitting the numbers I was hoping I would get. And so with their guidance, uh, we came out with some killer packaging and some great formulas. And I already landed uh, some huge pre-commits before I launched, which has been really great. Very cool. So uh, launching on March 1st, um, or launched on March 1st, uh, where can people find your product? So it's, well, I'm based in Napa, so you can find me at local specialty markets, and I'll be in HEB um, in June. Awesome, awesome. And what's the price point per can? We're about 249 to 299 Okay, cool. And will this be positioned as a sports recovery beverage, a functional beverage, just something delicious to drink? I mean, all of the above. No, <laughs> um, I'm, <laughs> I definitely am trying to go after that kind of coconut water consumer. Um, just with that less sugar, you know, excellent hydration. Um, yeah, recovery, uh, recovery as well, for sure. Sure, it makes a great mixer as well. I have, I am your number one uh, person that can tell you, yes, the, the lime cactus water is great with a little bit of tequila, yeah. Uh, that does <laughs> sound pretty great. Uh, well, Sarita, uh, great speaking with you and uh, good luck with everything going forward with cactus. Uh, when you have an opportunity, I'd love to try it. 
I, I sent you guys samples, so be on the lookout. Thank you Thank so you. much. All right. That Thanks, was, guys. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Uh, that was Sarita Lopez, who's the owner of Cactus. Uh, is that, I, I know. I, I, we actually can't, couldn't see the cans from our, our vantage point, but I saw them in the corner of my eye on our AV team's computer. It does look like a really good rebrand. I'm glad. Uh, amazing what she's done so Very far. Very attractive. Yeah, for sure. All right. Up next, we have the founder of Hope and Sesame, Sesame Milk, and that is James Curley. James, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Very, good. very good. Uh, it has Thanks for hosting this, by the way. Thank you so much for being with us. It has uh, your, the name of your company is Spinning Wheel Brands, but the brand I'm looking at is Hope and Sesame. Correct. Spinning Wheel Brands is a portfolio of brands, but Hope and Sesame is our largest and fastest scaling brand. Very cool. And uh, Hope and Sesame uh, participated in the New Beverage Showdown about a year ago. Uh, how's the brand progressed since? We're doing great. Actually, you know, in 2019, we launched the uh, shelf stable version of Hope and Sesame in five flavors. And at Expo West, we were planning to show our new refrigerator product, which is rolling out in Sprouts nationwide this week uh, and last week. Uh, it's refrigerated, 150 day shelf life, uh, eight grams of protein. Uh, it's a complete protein, by the way. All nine essential amino acids. Uh, FDA good source of protein claim applies. Uh, Forty-eight ounce PET containers, and um, we were really excited to show it. And separately, we were launching our uh, barista version in shelf stable for food service, and we had a whole setup for espresso drinks and lattes, and didn't get to serve anybody. So, what, you know, what is the? How does the flavor of the sesame beverage complement coffee? So, so, our, so we start with what's left after you press sesame oil. So that particular cake that's left, where, which is the, where we start to make a protein, is actually fairly bland. And so our sesame milk has a really mild flavor, almost a milk-like flavor. It has a hint of sesame, but it's not a real strong flavor like tahini or toasted sesame or anything. It's a very mild flavor. We, we shot for the nutrition and sustainability of sesame uh, using what I said, what's left after making sesame oil, and then sesame as a crop is incredibly incredibly sustainable. And would you so say we're, we're, would you say ahead. the same thing for the products next to you that the sesame flavor is not very pronounced? It's not that pronounced. It's there, it's present in a mild way, but it's not a um, overwhelming flavor of sesame. Uh, a lot of the flavor of sesame is in the oil. That's why the Japanese toast it for toasted sesame oil. And so um, what we start with is actually an oil-free cake and then we make a protein from that and we make the milk from that. Uh, the call-out for protein, 8 grams, is pretty big on your package. Is that the most important aspect of your uh, brand to consumers? We feel it is. So it's 8 grams of protein, uh, and it's all nine essential amino acids. It's a complete protein, which most non-dairy beverages don't have. Most of them don't have close to 8 grams. Almond milk is 1 gram, for instance. Oat milk is 2 grams. Most of them are incomplete without a full amino acid profile. We rival dairy milk as a nutrition source. It's something I wanted to do. I've spent a lot of my career in the plant based space. I was at Tofurky for years, et cetera. And so we really wanted to provide a full nutritional alternative to dairy milk for people who choose to use plant-based milk, have lactose intolerance, et cetera. Great stuff. James, thank you so much for joining us on the live stream and good luck with the brand. Hey, thanks for having us. Really appreciate it very much. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing Hope and, uh, Hope and Sesame at Journey River Showdown. Um, really love the idea. You know, you don't see too many new uh, plant alternative milks that are using an ingredient like sesame. Right. Um, and I think they've, uh, they've done a really good job with it. Excellent. All right. Up next, we have Clara Pei, who is the CEO and founder of Unite Food. Clara, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you guys are pretty new, aren't you? Uh, one week old. <laughs> one week old. I would say that's pretty wow. new. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the brand. Thanks so much. It's actually a bucket list for me to be on your podcast, so I didn't think it would happen one week into my brand. So <laughs> well, once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, Unite. So it looks like you've got uh, protein bars is what you're yeah. primarily doing. Yeah. So we're the world's first globally inspired protein bar, and really the Unite story is my own personal story. I was an immigrant with my family to the U.S., and one of the most vivid memories that I had was becoming naturalized and going to that naturalization ceremony and seeing everybody waving their flags and just being so happy to be an American. You know, I'll never forget the diversity in that room and people hugging and just being so glad to be in America. And, you know, that made a real impression on me. And so fast forward some 30 years later, you know, I come kind of like kind of bored with protein bars and I couldn't figure out why. Then I realized that none of them spoke to my heritage or like my 
background. And so I set out to prove that diversity can be delicious. And I saw an opportunity to create bars that were globally inspired. So, you know, here I have um, churro bar, which is, you know, everybody loves churros. They're cinnamon and toffee bits, but you know, it's an almond butter base and they're gluten-free and dairy-free and soy-free and really just wholesome ingredients packed with hemp seeds and, and prebiotic fiber. And then you have Mexican hot chocolate, which I was going to debut at Expo, which has also an almond butter base, but it's got dark chocolate and cinnamon and, you know, it's a little bit savory with a little hint of chili, which, surprise, kids have loved the most, which I thought would be spicy for kids, but apparently they love it and it's awesome. And I couldn't represent heritage without representing the heritage I'm most proud of, which is my American heritage as well, which with PB&J. So peanut butter and jelly, you know, takes me back to school lunches, um, you know, soft white bread creamy peanut butter, jammy strawberry jam. And so I recreated that in this bar. It tastes just like a sandwich, which is amazing. It's got a peanut butter base. It's got little strawberry bits that are kind of surprised inside. And what I'm most proud of, of these bars is the texture that we were able to create, which is, you know, you can see the beautiful nuts and pieces of the fruit inside the bar. So it really feels like you're eating real food, whole foods, and they're super nutritious. What will be the channel strategy for Unite Bars? Will you go after Sea store, natural, mass market. What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, it's, nat it's perfect for natural, the natural markets out there. I think it, you know, with the green deck and clean label, it's a natural um, fit there. Um, but I want to also be with consumers that are on the go. So airports and, you know, at students that are, you know, at college and that want to just have that really wholesome snack to tide them over to their next meal. It really keeps you full. It's full of functional ingredients. And it's interesting. Yeah. Clara, I think you're off to a great start. Uh, congrats on the new brand and uh, good luck with everything going forward. And of course, thank you so much for joining us on the live stream. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Good stuff. I love the story. I love the brand. I love the flavors. Yeah, the flavors. I would oh like a goodness. churro nutrition bar. Churro or Mexican hot chocolate all of uh, them. protein bar. Maybe I, all at once. Wow. Yeah, it, it, That's a really good idea, right? actually. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, up next, we're going to keep on keeping on because we just can't stop here on the live stream. It's Livio Pesterzo, who is the founder and chairman of Hippies. Livio, how are you? Hey, Ray. How are you, bud? Good. Great. Good to see you. Great to see you as well. Um, Hippies was uh, launching some uh, really interesting new products at Expo West. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yes, we were. Um, we had a uh, 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 plan uh, to uh, present to the trade our uh, latest range uh, of uh, tortilla chips. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, right, since we started this uh, four years ago, the vision with Hippies was always to uh, really create a legume-based sort of snacking platform. Puffs was a, was a category that where we thought there was a, a tremendous opportunity to, um, to, 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 to build a, uh, and create re real innovation. And uh, we've done a pretty good job with it. Um, you know, we are... Uh, uh, in over 50,000 stores nationally today, and uh, yeah, I pinch myself every day on, on, on how things have gone. It's been an incredible success story. But what we did also uh, as part of that journey, we always thought about building a lifestyle brand and, and, a, and a great community. And uh, you know, we we do I, we have a, we have this fanatical following that kept asking us, "When are you going to do more? When are you going to do more?" And uh, and there we are. You know, we um, we decided to launch. Um, a new line of tortilla chips. Uh, we wanted to remain fairly close to, you know, uh, salty snacks, uh, as is what we got pretty good at over the last four years. And um, tortilla is uh, is a larger category than, pa than puffs. It's a uh, five plus billion dollars, and we felt our brand had the strength to 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 transition from being the number one natural puffs into. Uh, into doing some good work in, in, in the tortilla categories, uh, you know, maintaining the same better for you nutritional profile, uh, the attributes that have, have, have been at the core of, you know, the brand, organic, gluten-free, vegan, the plant-based plant protein story has always been at the center of it. So we're fired up. Real shame Expo didn't happen, but, uh, you know, the products have been in stores and exclusively with Whole Foods uh, and Amazon since the beginning of the year. So, um and it's all right about 60 seconds okay how does a brand like hippies decide when to say no and when to say yes Ooh, great question um you, you, you know um i think we've been very methodical in the way we, we we went about building the brand 
you know, we went out of the blocks with a lot of visibility being in Starbucks stores, and we were approached by a lot of opportunities, domestic and certainly a lot of ton of opportunity international. So we really stay focused on doing the right things uh, that made sense uh, at the right time within our sort of life cycle. Uh, similar way, we brought the same mindset to deliver innovation. We have a lot of confidence we can be delivering as, as good as a success story in, a, in what is a, an adjacent, like a very close category. So, and we also felt that you know there was a there was a there was a need for a chickpea-based sort of uh, tortilla chip, tortilla chip tortilla chip with enhanced nutritional. So we feel good. Uh, I feel good about this uh, this interview, Livio. Thank you so much for joining us on the live stream. Uh, best Thank of luck you. with the new line. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great All to right. see you. Great to see you as well. Uh, geez, you know, I've uh, known Livio for quite some time, and uh, he's done an amazing thing with hippies. They know a thing or two about how to grow a brand. Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, I haven't tried the new tortilla chips, but the way he was describing them, they seem like a really innovative addition to that category. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, All right. Up next, we have Alexandra Caron, who's the CEO and co-founder of The Honest Stand. And you, sir, your name. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. My name is Jeremy Day, and I'm the co-founder of The Honest Stand. Right on. The Honest Stand. Yeah. What do you guys do? So at The Honest Stand, what we do is we take plants and turn them into convenient Americana comfort foods. And so with that, we have three things that we want to share with you all today. One, we have some formula refreshes to our current products. Two, we have some exciting new flavors that we're going to be launching. And then three, we have a brand refresh that's going to wrap it all together. All this is exciting coming off of a, a great 2019. We had a 250% year over year growth this last year. And with that just surpassed 5,000 points of distribution with our current products. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, tell us a bit about the refresh. What do you, what's different on the package? Yeah, sure. So, you know, we know that our customers are mostly using the product in social gathering settings and celebratory manners, like at graduations and things like that. And so mm -hmm. we wanted to update the packaging to reflect that by really showing how plants can fuel a life of fun and adventure. And we did yeah. that by creating unique illustrations for all now of our seven SKUs um, mm -hmm. to go along with them. Yeah. So here's a sneak peek. So here are the four of our seven new illustrations to be able to bring about this very celebratory nature. And with that, we have two new flavor profiles that we're bringing forth. So we have Buffalo Blue and Sriracha Ranch. And so the idea behind both of these, we're looking at like very traditional Americana dairy flavor profiles and then bringing in emerging flavor, flavor profiles. So you know, in a plant-based nature, we have our ranch base and then we're adding in Sriracha to it to make Sriracha Ranch. And then we have our blue base and adding in buffalo to make buffalo blue. All, again, being plant-based, organic, and paleo. Very you cool. Talk information? Yeah, so you know, along with the two new flavors, we actually upgraded all of our other five current SKUs. And mm -hmm. our customers and our team, we all thought what we had was great, but Jeremy and I felt we could do even better. So yeah. we just upgraded the formulas to get even closer to traditional dairy-based profiles of you know our, our mild and spicy nacho, our cheddar and smoked cheddar, and our garlic parm style dip. Yeah. I, th I think of the honest stand as being innovators in the category. How do you stay ahead of the competition, but not so far ahead that you have to educate everybody? Yeah. So that's actually that is a conversation we, that we brought up a lot over the last eight months. And as we were coming forth with these new flavor profiles, that was one of the things that influenced it. So again, trying to meet people where they're at in regards to like, we consider our main market, like that flexitarian, the individuals that not particularly are saying, hey, I need to live a completely vegan lifestyle, but the ones that are wanting to eat less meat and cheese. And so we got to meet them where they're at. So you think about ranch and blue cheese, like those are age old dairy profiles, but we have all these emerging flavor profiles like ranch and buffalo, or sorry, like sriracha and buffalo that are in items in which that people know to a certain extent, but are still growing rapidly. Like sriracha having 16% household penetration right now and growing. Outstanding. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing uh, the news about the yeah. new brand refresh and the new products. Great stuff. Good luck with everything going forward and uh, hope to uh, catch up again really soon. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank Have you a great so one. Much. All right. Take it easy. Uh, that looks really good. I love the new look. I mean, that is some tight Gorgeous. branding right there. Yeah, they did a really good job. I want to dive right in. Yeah. What did you say? The hand drawn industry illustrations? Is that the way I you believe said? so. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. And I like the way it's sort of organized, like the, the honest stand, you can very much very quickly tell that's the brand. I don't know what font they're using, but it looks awesome. And it does look adventurous. Yes. <laughs> All right. Is this is this Evan Holly? Hey. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear Hi. you, Evan. How are you? 
I'm great. How are you? Evan is the CEO of Michelle and Augustin. I'm always going to mispronounce the last part of that. But uh, where are you calling from? Uh, we're, we're at the banana farm right now in Brooklyn. Hold on, I gotta turn this noise off. Did you let's turn this thing off? Come on, what is this? <laughs> what are you doing here? How what blue is your here? hair right now? So the ba- some sort of the the banana the banana oh, wow. farm <laughs> the banana farm is the name of your headquarters in Brooklyn, right? That's correct. Yeah, Ray, that's yeah. correct. Um, tell, why is it called the banana farm again? Uh, because uh, we have a we have a banana tree. <laughs> this is our that's our banana plant. Now, now, now we can't just to note we can't see you. You've only got your audio, but um, I know you had a bunch. Oh, you of, can't see me. Yeah, we can't see. But, but it's not. Don't worry about that because I know you have a lot to talk about when it comes to the new products at Expo West. Uh, croissant chips is something you were going to be introducing. Yeah, croissant chips are our new thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to work for a French company. Um, you hear a lot about how great the food is and how cultured they are and all these things. And it, most of them are true, you know, for the most part. Um, but I've always said to them that you're really not a food culture unless you have a chip, right? Because everyone has a chip. Uh, there's the Hispanics who've got tortilla chips. The Jews, we got bagel chips. The <laughs> Greeks and the and those folks in the Mediterranean, they have pita chips, uh, plantain chips. You name it. Like across the board, there's chips everywhere. Uh, but the French have no chip. They've been chipless for thousands of years, and so it was time to fix that. And we're the solution. How how are we going to eat croissant chips? Are we going to dip them? Are we going to just eat them like they are? How do we do this? We need a well, roadmap. So the croissant chips right now, they're, they're very thinly sliced, um, and they're, they're just dusted, lightly dusted with a little, with a little sugar. So they're, they're sweet and uh, crispy. Um, for today, I like to just eat them plain, personally, um, but you know, I think they'd be great on ice cream. I'm going to try that at some point. I'm really excited to do that. Um, I think that I think that we could uh, enjoy them with a cup of coffee. I actually could put them in a bowl with some uh, milk potentially, and uh, and have them like cereal. I don't know. I think that we're gonna let, people are going to decide what they want to do with these things. Uh, yeah, it seems like they pr- they have a pretty wide usage occasion, um, especially the way you're describing them. Evan, unfortunately, we're we're out of time. I feel like I could talk to you for like another hour. Um, please stay in touch and let us know what's uh, what's new with the brand going forward. All right. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, Everyone's everyone's always fun to talk to. The best. I was actually in um, that uh, their neighborhood of New York in Brooklyn uh, about a month ago, and I wanted to head over to the banana farm. They have these events there all the time, and um, it seems like a really fun place. I would go to the banana farm. Seems like there's a lot going on there. All right. Up next, we have Susan Knudsen, who's the co-founder, I'm sorry, the CEO and founder of The Naked Baker. Susan, how are you? Susan? Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Great, great. Uh, Tell us about The Naked Baker. What do you guys do? Well, The Naked Baker is a gluten-free cookies that is all natural, clean ingredient to non gluten We're manufactured in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, We use all purity protocol oats, real Wisconsin butter, amazing chocolate. what our differentiator is that we are a fresh bakery. Um, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good. Yeah, keep on keeping on. Yeah. <laughs> You're about to tell us about your differentiator. Uh, we are. Oh, sorry. I, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback, I think. So, uh, we are a fresh bakery. We are um, not a center store or a frozen um, item. We are fresh and soft like you find in a fresh bakery. Um, we give the gluten-free consumer a new place to shop. Uh, we are bringing them into the bakery department to be able to buy fresh cookies, not just um, a box or a frozen product. So we found that was what was missing in the category. If you could get in front of your target retailers and have them know anything, what would you want them to know? I would want them to know that we are a fresh product. We don't be sold out of a frozen case or a center store. 
Um, we want to be um, market uh, merchandise in the fresh bakery department because that's really where we belong, and that's where we found our success. Now, what were you going to be exhibiting at Expo West had you been able to go to the show? We were unveiling all of our new packaging here, um, which is this here is one of the. Uh, this is our monster cookie. Uh, we have seven plates of everyday uh, cookie flavors that we uh, sell in grocery stores. We're unveiling our new packaging and just getting our name out there and telling people we're here. So Nice, nice. And everything is gluten-free, I'm seeing from the... Uh... Yep, we are gluten-free. We're non-GMO, clean label. That's our name, the Naked Baker. We like to say we're naked of all the bad stuff. That's... So. Outstanding. Well, Susan, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us on the live stream, and uh, great job with the new packaging. Thank you. Well, thanks for having us. And did you get your product? We sent them just to you because I heard you complain the other day that you never did. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, you, you've made my afternoon. You really have. Thank you so much. I, I don't know if we've received it yet, but when we do get it, that's the first box I'm going to open. Thank you, thank you thank so you. much again for being, a, being with us. That, I, 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 that makes me really happy. Susan, uh, shout out to uh, my call to try some of the products that we sometimes and get. And there it is. And there it is. <laughs> Very nice of her to do that. Um, great idea. I like, I, Absolutely. I mean, and that was a great question about you know, where it should be merchandised and how she, she wants to, the kind of retailer she wants to be in. Yeah. All right. Up next, we have Robbie Sansom, who is the co-founder and CEO of Force of Nature. Robbie, how are you? Doing all right. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, this was going to be your first time at Expo West? It was. We were, we were planning a big launch. We had some exciting, exciting stuff we were hoping to share. Uh, so well, tell us about some of that exciting stuff. Yeah, well, I'd love to. Thank you. Um, so we at Force of Nature Meats actually spent the last seven years studying regenerative agriculture and creating a brand called Epic Provisions. And ultimately, we're inspired by the amazing results this form of agriculture uh, um, could yield, uh, as we saw expressed in visiting ranches all over the world. And so those, experience, uh, those experiences revealed to us that a scalable system exists um, and one that can improve the welfare of not only animals, but can also rebuild ecosystems and create the best tasting and most nourishing meat uh, on the planet for consumers. And so we love eating meat, um, but we're tired of accepting the reality that this incredible type of food wasn't widely understood um, and wasn't widely available for consumers who would absolutely jump at the chance to support such a virtuous agriculture system. And then further, as I'm sure we're all aware, at a time when meat is widely under attack for the offenses of the worst example of its production, I really don't think it's fair to assign those same attributes to all meat. Um, what we should be doing is raising awarenesses uh, to those challenges because we certainly need to do something about it, um, but we should also be creating access to better meat at the same time. Cool. And. Uh, that's what regenerative meat is, right? It's, it's actually better for consumers than plant-based alternatives. It's better for the environment across a myriad of global issues. Um, and you know whether that be carbon or soil loss or dead zones in oceans, ecosystem destruction, pollinator uh, die-off, toxins in our food, there's just so many things that, that, that we should be talking about. Um, and you know those are all things that we're giving traditional plant-based systems a, a free pass on. And this really isn't about plant-based versus meat-based. That's not where the discourse should be. It should be about planet-based agriculture. And that's what regenerative agriculture is. It's agriculture with plants and animals thriving together in fully functioning ecosystems that are diverse and managed in nature's image. And so that's where force of nature really enters the picture because somebody needed to step up and make the case not just for better meat, but for agriculture all around um, that supports the creation of these sorts of supply chains and provides these sorts of products and that's what it boils down to. Consumer, consumers deserve to know the truth and they deserve to participate in this regenerative revolution. So together we can heal our environment and restore our health and accelerate the, glo uh, the growth of an agriculture system that actually enriches our civilization. And frankly, I think that's really what we need right now. Uh, I, I think uh, you're on the right track, Robbie. Um, we've only got a couple more, uh, about 10, uh, 20 seconds left. Um, tell us about where the name, where did Force of Nature come from? We just thought it really spoke to the, the core mission of what we're trying to, um, to, to get consumers to connect to, and that is nature is a force, and that's an idiom we all recognize and appreciate. And if we work with it um, and, replace a, and, and replace a system that literally engages in warfare against nature through chemicals and mechanical interference, we'll be much better off. Well said, uh, and a great introduction to the brand. Really appreciate the time. Thanks for being with us on the live stream. Hey, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Enjoy All right. your day. You too.
Good stuff. Good I, stuff. Yeah, I like, the, I like what he's putting down. We talk a lot about plant-based meat, but um, here we have meat-based meat in the mix. <laughs> meat-based <laughs> meat is always nice. You know, there's always a place for meat-based meat, always. I would say. Yes. Um, well, this has been great so far, and I think we have one more person that's going to join us on the live stream, and that is Joanne Bolanda. Uh, how, how do you pronounce Bolanda. the last name? Bolanda. Joanne, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having us, Thevnet. Thank you so much for being with us. You are the president of Co Chocolate? Yes, Co Chocolate. Co Chocolate. Tell us about the brand. Yes, so this means so much to us because this is the first ever live worldwide, worldwide debut of Co Chocolate. <laughs> we are an entirely new brand. Co, we are launching in May, start fifth, end of May. And what we are is we are an all natural, plant based, with crushed butter, sugar free. Keto friendly, only one gram of net carbs, dairy free, line of snackable, snackable chocolates. So tell me what that is. You can put our chocolate together. You can see they're in different little, you have a C here, an O here. We have so different, really unique flavors. As you can see in the banner behind me, these are all of our flavors that are all in the same bag. So what we did when we were developing this and looking at the concept and where there's opportunity in the category is variety, bringing back that childhood joy of pick a mix. When we would go to the candy store and we're little and put together all of our combinations, well, we're doing this in a better for you way. Low, no sugar, again, dairy free, vegan, keto friendly. So what you could do is make your own mix. You could take, say, an espresso piece and layer that with blood orange. You could take, say, a pineapple habanero, which is nice and free with a little bit of heat, mix that with some cinnamon. Really nice combination. Or you could have something on your own, say strawberry lemon chia, which is fresh and fruity, almost a little bit like a smoothie taste. So we're really excited to bring, again, all of these flavors. You can see all the, the variety. Bringing that variety to consumers in a better for you life and having fun with it. And there's more to it than just um, the product, it's also the mission. So Co, you think community, collaboration, and you look at all of these different flavors that we have, and it's taking all of our differences. Our mission is to celebrate variety, celebrate differences, because we know together, when we rally together and embrace variety as a human truth, life tastes better if we bring our differences together as one. So we will have um, the hashtag, which is now out on social media um, across Instagram and LinkedIn, but you'll see a lot of us hashtagging all in the same bag. It's right here. And more details to come on our mission, again, of how do we take things that are different, unexpected combinations that um, different viewpoints and realize that together we can unite and be stronger. Joanne, we're out of time, but you know I don't mind because that was fantastic. Thank you so much for that introduction to the brand. Really good stuff. Can't wait to try the product. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, guys. And thank you again for having us. Appreciate it. All right. Good stuff from Joanne and Co Chocolate. That stuff really looks great. The branding is incredible. Really I love the job. idea of being able to stack different flavors on top of each other. It, it's like uh, the best experience you could hope for when in, in the same bag. You're trying a whole bunch of different things in one single bag. Yeah, fantastic stuff. All right, we're going to wrap it up here on the live stream, the Elevator Talk live stream. Uh, before we wrap up, I just want to say thank you so much to our uh, Expo West 2020 sponsors. That's Top Health Ingredients, Koya. Karuna, Stratus Group, uh, Planet A, Flow Water, Vive Organic, Evolution Fresh, Justin's, Panos Brands, Otto's Naturals, Temple Lifestyle, Maya Kamal, Ritual Zero, Belgian Boys, From the Ground Up. Uh, really appreciate all your sponsorship and all your efforts in helping us deliver this content to our industry. Uh, this has been really fun the last uh, couple hours. It's been really amazing to meet all the entrepreneurs behind these really innovative and fun brands. Uh, we're going to do this again next week, starting on Tuesday, March 17th, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, are you going to be back? I'd love to. I'd love for you to be back as well. All right. That's going to wrap us up here on the Elevator Talk live stream. Thank you so much to our AV team. You guys just kill it every single time we ask you to do anything. Uh, the most important part of our business. No joke. Uh, once again, I'm Ray Latif, the editor and producer of Taste Radio, signing off from Melissa Reverse. We'll see you next time.